Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, Director of Multicultural Affairs for the City of Huntsville, and welcome to Impact. Each week we bring you information about exciting things that are happening in our community, and today will be no different. Now, for those of you who tune into the show from time to time, you know one of my favorite subjects is fitness and nutrition. And today we're going to be talking about a very special group of, I'm going to call them fitness freaks today, because the information that they're going to talk about should be motivating and perhaps even exhausting. They are members of the Redstone 10 Miler team, and I'm happy to introduce them at this time. Skip Vaughn is here. Welcome, Skip. Glad to be here. It's good to have you here on the broadcast and looking forward to all this great information that you have to share about this initiative. Uh, Skip is public affairs specialist with the U.S. Garrison at Redstone Arsenal. We welcome you here. Beck Mitchell sitting next to him is an account executive at Digium Incorporated. Welcome to the broadcast. Happy to be here. It's good to have both of you guys. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, they both look very fit <laughs> and very trim, which means that they are definitely active on a regular basis. Tell us what the 10-miler team is. Well, we, we've um, been representing Rist and Arsenal at the Army 10-miler. Uh, it's in its 31st year this year, since the beginning in 1985. And we've established a pretty good legacy of winning. Um, since 2007, we've won the championships. These, this draws teams from all over the world. But in 2007, we won our first championship in government agency. And we've won every government agency title since 2007, so there's nine in a row. Since 2009, we've won every all-comers category since 2009. So we've had double championships every year since 2009. These are two of our trophies. These are uh, this year's trophies, and we've got 16 of them, exactly like this. Wow. Well, it's a beautiful trophy, and um, obviously you guys are flying high. I see eagles on those trophies, so that pretty much typifies what you're doing and what you're engaged in. Um, so there's a group of people that run. I, I get that part. And I'm a, is there a minimum distance of 10 miles or maximum distance? Tell me how this whole thing works. Well, the race distance is, is a 10-mile race distance. Um, obviously, there's tons of training that goes into that. Um, leading up to the race, but the, the actual race is a 10-mile race. And so. is it it's a one-time-a-year event? Correct, yeah. The, the race is the Army 10-mile race in, in Washington, D.C. It's actually, uh, I believe, the second largest 10-mile race in the world, mm -hmm. um, generally about 35,000 registrants in the race. So. And your team has been competing at the highest level for a long period of time with some great success. So congratulations on that. I know that you were recently recognized at the city council in, meeting or a city council meeting. So uh, there was a number of you stretched the across city, the platform we'll there, smiling broadly uh, because of your accomplishment, hard. which is, and of I course, well-deserved. We I often team, wonder when I hear people engaged in this activity, and Skip, you're the most senior member of the group. Uh, Beck, you are the... Way to put it, yes. Uh, all right. And <laughs> the, the oldest. <laughs> all right, and we'll call Beck the least senior or the youngest. How about that? Um, whenever I hear people engage in this kind of activity, I always wonder about the backstory because I think you hit on it, Beck. There's a lot of training and preparation that goes into this process. Talk about, number one, how did you get involved in, in running 10 milers? Okay, I've, I've been... Like you said, the, the senior member. I've been with the team for 21 years. I started running at Butler High School. I ran track, and it's just been a hobby ever since then. I ran at Auburn University just as a hobby, stress release. And so it's just something I've continued. I'm 61 years old, and I still run almost every day. Mm. I just love the sport. Uh, Dr. Harry Hobbs is our coach. I'm the assistant coach. And we've just been blessed with great runners like Beck Mitchell, Brandon York, who, by the way, there were 26,069 finishers at this year's Army 10 Miler. He was 10th overall. He averaged a five minute pace. He finished in just over 51 minutes for 10 miles. So that's a five minute pace. He was uh, second overall out of the uh, age 30 to 39 age group. So he's a world class runner. He's a 2016 US Olympic marathon qualifier. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. And as I'm listening to you talk, Skip, I'm thinking that uh, you've been doing this for a number of years. You, at this point, get in kind of a minimum number of miles per week. And what would that number be for you? It's probably between 20 and 30 miles a week. Yeah. Um, until 
I ran my last marathon this year. I'm not, I'm retired from marathons, <laughs> but I've done 37 marathons. So wow. In various in places, I imagine. Well, mostly in Huntsville. Mostly in Huntsville. Okay. All right. And, and Beck, how did you get started? Well, I ran all throughout high school. Uh, I actually ran for UH here in town on an athletic scholarship. So, and that's what brought me to Huntsville. And you're from, originally from Dallas. From Dallas, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, I ran um, cross country and track in high school, moved on to, uh, you know, running for UH. And then from there, um, I, I took a, a little hiatus, and then I, I actually started back training in 2013. Um, I'm part of the, the Fleet Feet um, uh, racing team here in town for the, uh, the local running store, and uh, that's how I met a lot of the guys on the team because a, a lot of them are uh, very involved in the running community. Brandon York, as he mentioned, I ran with at UH as well. So Yeah. So what does it take in order to compete at this level? I, I'm talking rest, you know, sleep, nutrition, training. I mean, what do you, what's a typical thing for you, if, if you can call it a typical a regimen for getting prepared for something like this? Well, we, um, eight weeks before the actual race in Washington, D.C., the 10-miler, we start uh, training together as a team. We, we meet each Saturday at Redstone and run on the trails there. But also throughout the year, we have some very serious, dedicated runners like Beck and Brandon and Sean Allen, who all ran together at UH, and they run on their own. They average probably 60 to 100 miles a week. Mm. on their own. Mm. The rest of us old guys, me and Harry, we, <laughs> we average 20 to 30. Right, right. And uh, um, I mean, this is pretty, uh, I think, impressive, but it's also got to be uh, awfully stimulating and gratifying to be able to do what you do. I, I guess I just wonder, how do you find time to run 60 to 100 miles a week? You got a full-time job, don't you? Full-time job, family, son, wife, yep. I, uh, I usually wake up every morning at about 5 and, and run uh, at about 5.30 and then get to work. And then I reserve my evenings for family time, obviously, to, uh, to make sure I, I have all the right priorities in mind. So, but, yeah, just wake up early and just stay dedicated. It takes a, a lot of time to get used to that, so. So what do you, nutritionally, what do you, what kind, what's your diet like? The diet varies. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, it, we try to stay on diet, uh, a, a clean diet, leading up to races, obviously, to, to give us the best performance edge. Um, in between that, I'm not as, as uh, good on diet. Yeah, <laughs> disciplined on diet as I should be. Uh, but I know a lot of other guys, um, you know, they, they stay on a, a pretty... A healthy diet as far as um, in week in and week out through training. So. And when you say healthy, are you talking uh, just a mixture of fruits and vegetables and, you know, a minimum amount of protein? Yeah, obviously, products, obviously keeping low on sugars and yeah. um, keeping protein somewhat high for recovery purposes, mm -hmm. um, leading up to races, making sure you have enough carbs built up to, to have that energy during the race and things like that. So. Yeah, yeah. So where do you find your motivation beyond the internal motivation? I know it's kind of nice when somebody pats you in the back, get an add a boy, add a girl. Um, when you uh, win trophies like this, and you know that of course has to be motivating to establish a winning streak, as you all have to have a Brandon on your team. I mean, what keeps you motivated beyond just the internal motivation of saying, you know, boy, this is a good thing for me to do from a from a health perspective? Well, we're we're representing the best. Army post in the world, and it's just a privilege and an honor to be able to, to represent Redstone Arsenal. And so that's motivation in itself, and we include on our team, we have soldiers, we have Army civilians, we have defense contractors. It's just a gamut of Redstone Arsenal, and we all feel humbled by the opportunity to go each, each year and represent the post. Yeah. So that's the main motivation. Yeah, and that's got to be pretty, uh, uh, you know, motivating to be in that kind of a situation where you literally have the chance to represent um, a huge uh, post, like Redstone is and a significant one as well, uh, and then come back with the prize year after year, um, you know, not from just the perspective of saying, hey, we did it again, but it's the pride that comes from knowing that you invested a lot of time and preparation in the process and it yielded the results that you wanted. Uh, I wonder going forward, you know, you got to kind of challenge yourself from one year to the next to keep going. 
Uh, do you have specific goals? Do you want to keep, I'm sure you want to keep bringing the goal home. That's one of it. But I mean, beyond just bringing a goal home, what are your thoughts about the process going forward? Well, it's not easy every year. Um, you know, some years uh, we may win by uh, quite a bit in our division, but some years like this year, one of our divisions, we only won by a few minutes. So obviously there's uh, the, in the back of your mind, you always know that there's other groups out there that are competing for the same thing you're competing for. Um, it's just nice to, have, to be on a team uh, atmosphere. Um, like I said, a lot of us ran at UAH or previous team uh, uh, organizations uh, before, and it's just nice to have that again because uh, just being on a team really motivates each other uh, to perform to our best. So. So someone is listening to this show, to watching the show today, and they're thinking, you know, I've been, been thinking about running or getting out and being a little more active. And um, what would you say to them as a beginner, perhaps, or maybe somebody who uh, had been doing it for a time and then have gotten away from it for a while? What, what would be the best starting place for that person? Well, as a recreational runner, um, I'm not competitive like I used to be. I used to be able to average six minute miles and I can't do that anymore. But I, I would say for a beginner to just get out and walk. And, and after a while, if you feel comfortable enough, you jog maybe uh, the straights on a track and then walk the curves and do that and make sure you don't hurt yourself by trying to do too much too soon. But as far as um, the competition in the um, government agency category this year there were 68 well 56 teams and we won that by eight minutes and in the all comers division there was 168 teams from all over the world and we won by that by eight minutes um, wow. uh, uh, all government agency won by 36 minutes so all comers was really close eight minutes yeah but the competition is very stiff and they're all shooting for risk and arsenal. So yeah. <laughs> we had that extra motivation. I would imagine so. It's kind of year after year, you guys are the guys to beat. Yeah, the, the good thing about uh, Huntsville, too, and going back to the um, getting started and running, there's a, a huge running community in Huntsville, um, whether it be the, the guys on the, on the team, out on the arsenal running, um, or all the various groups um, running throughout Huntsville. And that's one thing that surprised me from moving from uh, you know, I moved from Dallas from a large city, is how huge the running group is in Huntsville, whether you're a recreational runner or a, a fierce competitor on all the local stage or national stage as well. So, Do you guys have a website, a social media presence, or the, any way no, that people can find out about you guys, other than the fact that you guys just <laughs> bring it home every year? Well, I'm going to put in a shameless plug for my newspaper, The Risk and Rocket. Please do. So we have a website there. Um, www.therestonerocket.com. So we, of course, cover the running team. I, I'm the assistant coach. Dr. Harry Hobbs is the coach. And anytime there's news about the running team, we'll put that. And we, we might have a tryout this coming spring, so we'll, we'll definitely have an announcement about that. People can find out about that. And, of course, we want you to just keep bringing the gold home or bring the bird home or... <laughs> You know, whatever you want to call it, we just want you to keep winning and doing it such a fine level. We appreciate your commitment to this process, and we thank you for coming on the broadcast and sharing a little bit about the 10 Mile Club today. Thanks for thank having you. us. All thank right. Uh, this is some great information, folks. I feel a little motivated. I might start walking a little more. And maybe if I feel motivated enough, I'll do some running. Let's see exactly <laughs> what happens. Uh, I love having these kinds of conversations because uh, when we think about the idea that it's much better to be active and moving and stay fit, these are some ways that we can do it, especially as we see it through the eyes of those that are out there leading the way. And these two gentlemen are definitely leading the way. Skip and Beck, once again, thank you. Thank, thank you. Kenny. We want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast today, and we hope that you'll tune in for our next edition of the broadcast. We hope that you'll like us on our Facebook page at Impact with Kenny Anderson. And we hope that you'll also maybe tune into our YouTube page where we have backstories about this show. And you can always catch information that you perhaps have missed on other great topics about things happening in our community. It's Impact with Kenny Anderson. We'll see you again in our next broadcast. Have a great day.